it's six degrees. Tops of six degrees today. And I'm wearing four layers. This is meant to be Australia, folks. This is meant to be Australia. But that hasn't really slowed us down this week. So as you can see, it's pretty cold up here and winter doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing because of course during winter outside of grape growing season and outside of I guess our primary gin crafting season, we obviously have citrus season. So one of the most popular products I think of 2019, uh, which sold out within a month, so we haven't had this for 11 months, uh, was our Unico Mando. And finally, after waiting 11 months, the fruit was finally ripe to come off the tree. So we've, uh, out of the orchard, we've had arrive uh, a couple of ton of decapons, which in Australia and, and in America, you might know them as sumos, but um, I mean, I guess that's the brand name for what is uh, a decapon, a very special type of Japanese mandarin that has a very, very high amount of, of oil content. Plus it's like the size of your head. So this week we've been uh, manically trying to, to peel. There is no mechanized way to actually peel mandarins to be able to use, because we use just the peel, the fruit largely, we're finding other uses for at the moment, but uh, we really just really want the, the peel. For those actually who came up to help, because we had a, a whole amazing team of bartenders uh, up from Adelaide that uh, that gave up their entire days to, to help us peel through a couple of tonne of, keep in mind that they're also unwaxed citrus, so they're gonna start to go moldy within a matter of days. Uh, so you don't really have a lot of time to, to really get in there and, and rip the rip the peel off and, and get it uh, basically soaking in ethanol so we can start the liqueur making process. The other thing that we've been uh, up to this week, of course, it is now a month on since World Toasty Day. Now, if you didn't watch what we did for World Toasty Day, I'm gonna link it up into the description, uh, but essentially we got out uh, and got in contact with a bunch of chef mates of ours, and I guess people in Australia that are known for making the best damn toasty on planet Earth. And we got their recipes, they submitted recipes for it, uh, we shoved it up, uh, we did a great video with Stephen DeHorse, chocolatier down in Adelaide. He kindly let us take over his kitchen. Whilst we made all of the different recipes, we voted on them, we checked their crunch, we checked the melt pool, we put it up for voting. The winner venue gets a dozen Esoterico, as well as a person who voted for that winner uh, will also be randomly selected to take home a dozen Esoterico, our most cult followed wine. Uh, and we have collated the votes. They are all in the top three winners. Number three is ourselves. <laughs> We submitted a recipe, Noah came up with a recipe called Induya Wanna Toasty and it was full of Induya and Buffalo Mozzarella and it had the most marvellous melt pool with 135 votes. Um, we obviously won, we, we went, came in third place, not the winning place. Coming in second was Toast Face Griller. Probably the best named venue, I think, in Australia that makes toasties, for sure. Um, but they came in with 140 votes, just pipped us a little bit. But by far, the biggest winner, drum roll please, the biggest winner, the one that took out all the votes, 210 votes. It was relentless. We were just getting votes streaming in. Then we'd stop for a bit and then they'd stream in again. So obviously you guys were really, really, really digging this particular recipe. It was the one and only Proof Wine Bar in Adelaide. Well done guys. You will be getting a dozen Esoterico. We'll be dropping it off in the next week too. Um, but mate, that, uh, that the toasty, and again, links up in the description if you wanna go and jump on, on the recipe, as well as we'll link out to the blog post where you can actually download that recipe. It was by far the most delicious, and I can completely understand why you guys won the competition. So well done, guys. That is seriously, seriously awesome, and nothing warms my heart more than to be able to give it to uh, our really good mates as well. And of course, the third thing, the third thing that we've been up to this week, 
uh, has been preparing for something very, very special. Many of you may have been uh, visiting a lot of our live streams. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook right now, you can just jump straight into our other videos or our channels tab, uh, and you can actually see that we are at episode, I believe on Wednesday was 98. That means Monday is gonna be 99, and next Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, is going to be episode 100. Now, we were planning a quite sizable celebration, as you can imagine, 100 episodes within a, a very short period of time in the last four months, uh, with some utterly amazing guests and amazing stories told from the hospitality industry. Um, we didn't feel that it was actually that appropriate to be celebrating when many of our compatriots over in Victoria are actually feeling the pinch for the second time and, and in many instances with far less support than they had on the first lockdown. So what we've decided to do is this coming Wednesday, we are going to be uh, doing a bit of a fundraiser for a very, very important charity, or I guess movement called COVID EAD, which stands for the Employee Assistance Directive. Now what that actually does, and what I guess it achieves, is it has chefs cooking these amazing meals and delivering them to food and beverage and hospitality workers who are obviously going through a hard time, who may not be able to afford to actually feed themselves, or who may not be on JobKeeper or are struggling with JobSeeker. Now keep in mind, these for everyone that's actually gone to Melbourne and had an amazing, amazing night out, the people that have fed you, you will be feeding them in their time of need, in their time of greatest and absolute need. So what we're gonna be doing is, uh, for our 100th episode, we're gonna be doing a, a roast the host. We're gonna be inviting back uh, some past guests. We might even have some celebrity guest cameos roasting the crap out of me, whilst bringing on a bit of a blind tasting. Every guest is gonna bring on a different bottle. Uh, for every question that I get wrong in the options game, we're gonna be donating $20 to COVID EAD. Whilst also, for every minute that is watched, and that is collective minutes, if you chime in and you watch one minute, we're gonna be donating 10 cents on your behalf to COVID EAD. If we get 100,000 minutes watched, we're gonna donate $10,000 to COVID EAD. That's our goal, we wanna be able to donate $10,000 to COVID EAD at the end of Wednesday's live stream. Now, for those that are looking to chime in, it is 5.30 AEST or five o'clock, a little bit early, half an hour earlier if you're in Adelaide. So guys, chime in on Wednesday to see me getting roasted the crap out of, whilst trying hopelessly to guess based purely on taste and smell alone the actual identity of the wines that our guests are bringing and they're not gonna make it easy for me. They're gonna make it very, very hard for me. Have a bit of fun, throw me a, a all the trolls out there, I invite all of you, troll the crap out of me uh, on Wednesday because we're gonna be doing it for charity. It's gonna be a great time. But uh, guys, that's all from me this week. Thanks so much for chiming in. Thank you so much for the support and uh, we'll catch you next Friday. Ciao.